Thanks, John. I, I really thank you for the kind invitation. It's such a beautiful day, beautiful weekend here in New York. So I'm arguing uh, in favor that there is a role for radiation therapy in the treatment of early stage follicular lymphoma. And if you look at SEER data, uh, registry types of experiences, up to 30% of newly diagnosed follicular lymphoma are called stage one or stage two. How carefully those patients are investigated with bone marrow or, or PCR, I think, remains a question. And certainly guidelines, uh, as I'll show you, do recommend radiation as first-line therapy. Uh, most of these are single institution retrospective studies, and they suggest a prolonged progression-free survival with few events after 10 years of follow-up, but there really aren't any randomized studies that have been performed comparing radiation therapy to other approaches. Interestingly, only about a third of patients with early-stage follicular lymphoma are treated with radiation in the United States. So if you look at uh, the NCCN guidelines for stage one and two disease, uh, the initial therapy, uh, initial uh, recommendation is local regional radiation. And an up-to-date, uh, it's written for most patients with stage one or non-bulky stage two follicular lymphoma, we suggest initial treatment with radiation therapy rather than the treatment with chemotherapy or rather than initial period of observation. And I think the question as to why that is, is based on these retrospective experiences and, and one registry experience that suggests if you follow these patients for a long time, uh, the 10-year freedom from relapse is close to 50%, meaning that with less than a month of treatment, uh, these patients won't need to be treated again for an extremely long period of time. And clearly, the local control rates are very, very high. So the node that they may present with is gone, and it's a, often with very minimal toxicity. Uh, Vancouver has looked at this, and uh, they make uh, an argument that um, the types of radiation therapy that you need uh, clearly are smaller fields. It used to be um, an involved field radiation therapy. It's now moved to an involved node radiation therapy. And in so doing, the overall survival really remains quite favorable with two-thirds of patients alive in their series at 10 years. And if you look, the, the um, use of the involved node radiation therapy, which uh, clearly has less toxicity associated with it, has exactly the same outcome as a larger field. The other point to make here is on the progression-free survival, they, they are following these patients for a long time, and there really are very few events after about eight years. Uh, transformation is another risk, of course, and you can see that in these patients, uh, there are almost no uh, transformation events that are occurring after year 10. Again, whether this is an absolute cure or a functional cure, I'm not sure it matters. I think that the patients really are deriving some degree of benefit from this early non-toxic intervention. And at least in a uh, registry series that was put together looking at the SEER registry, they just looked at the patients who got radiation therapy compared to those who did not with early stage follicular lymphoma, and they were able to demonstrate a, a disease-specific survival benefit to uh, the patients who got radiation therapy, meaning fewer patients died of follicular lymphoma who got initial radiation compared to those who did not. As I said, despite this, the trends have been that only about 30% uh, of patients in the United States are getting radiation therapy. And similar trends are seen in France, where the use of radiation therapy is probably in the 30 to 40% range. Now, this was the Advani paper that Dr. Coleman referenced. And I'll just emphasize that these were really highly selected patients. Uh, Stanford was an institution, certainly at that time, that had a major bias toward radiation for virtually any type of lymphoma that walked in the door. And early stage follicular lymphoma was their standard approach was to uh, give radiation. So this uh, group of patients was collected over a very prolonged period of time and may have been chosen um, due to excision uh, of disease without any disease remaining, or potentially some abdominal sites where um, radiation uh, was not indicated. 
And they really concluded that it was only selected patients that they would consider no initial therapy to be an acceptable option. Uh, Peter referenced the National Lymphocare Study. Uh, we took a look at the uh, rigorously staged follicular lymphoma stage one patients and uh, were able to determine uh, 206 patients who had a, both a CT or a PET scan and a bone marrow at diagnosis. It turns out that a PET scan did not really make a difference as far as ultimate outcome. And uh, this is how those patients were treated. This is between 2004 and 2007. And you can see that many different treatment approaches were utilized. Um, not surprisingly, there were some differences. Uh, for example, patients who were treated with more aggressive uh, regimens had uh, grade three disease, had um, more B symptoms. So if, if you just think about uh, radiation therapy versus observation, you can see that on the progression-free survival curve, uh, at least up front, there were not major differences seen. And uh, I pulled an update of these curves, and you can see that the radiation therapy alone does continue to show some drop-off, but similar to other aspects of follicular lymphoma, the outcomes seem to be much, much better than what we've seen in the past. And you can see here that over 80% of patients remain free of disease beyond six years. And the median follow-up in these curves is about eight years. Finally, I'll just mention that um, in addition to smaller field size, there's a trend toward the use of lower doses of radiation. And the feeling is that those should have less toxicity. So this was a randomized trial, 24 gray versus 40 to 45 gray. 64% of these patients had follicular lymphoma. So when you see the survivals here, they're going to be lower than what you'd expect. Some of these patients had marginal zone lymphoma, and even a couple had mantle cell lymphoma. But the majority of these patients, particularly the ones with follicular lymphoma, were treated with curative intent. And you can see that the two curves here are totally overlapping, and freedom from local progression and progression-free survival suggesting, first of all, that this therapy provides excellent local control, and second of all, that there are no differences between 24 gray and 40 to 45 gray in either progression-free or overall survival, with a follow-up that's beyond 5.6 years. So I think a reasonable standard would be involved node radiation therapy at 24 gray, which is really only a couple of weeks of treatment. Uh, recently published Canadian evidence-based guideline in the management of follicular lymphoma just came out a few weeks ago, and they concluded that uh, their top line for early-stage follicular lymphoma was that radiation therapy should be considered the preferred treatment for localized follicular lymphoma, and when either the potential toxicity of radiation outweighs potential benefits, or if the patient refuses radiation, then observation may be a reasonable alternative. So uh, in my conclusions, I think it's important that patients need to be completely staged uh, because there's no question that if you don't do a bone marrow biopsy in these patients, you may miss occult uh, advanced stage disease. Um, the excellent outcome is observed with over five years of follow-up with various treatment modalities, but radiation therapy provides outstanding local control and may contribute to functional cure in approximately one-third of patients. And 24 gray is an adequate dose and will minimize short and long-term toxicities. And my approach uh, has been that radiation remains my primary therapy for most patients. I would put the caveat in that I treat early stage grade three disease, which is not very common, with combined modality therapy like early stage diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in most patients. And that's my argument. <laughs>